Hi, my name is Jonathan, and today I will show you how to build the real-time speed and position control of a DC motor. To achieve that, you need the following relations for the model, and also a few values of constants. These values can be easily found on the datasheet of the DC motor. So for this kind of motor, you can neglect the effect of the inductance in the model. As we see on the graph, the step response of the first order, so without inductance, is almost the same as the second order with inductance. The first step is creating a folder. In this folder you create another one for just the model. So I just advise you to do the same as I'm doing because after you will have a lot of stuff. After we build the model on the simulink just pick the blocks we need for the construction of our model the gain, the sum, transfer function also the two inputs and outputs of any national instrument very stand Save the stuff in the folder, <laughs> give it a recognizable name, So for the DC motor, the model of the DC motor, the input is the tension U. Yeah, for this block we could also have used the gain, because finally we don't consider the inductance. So there is no Laplacian in this block so QC KC sorry is on the direct chain you have KE on the feedback of our model CR is for the, the resistant uh, the, resist, the resistant um, torque copper as you want In our case, we have the same values, Ke and Kc. This is because we we are working with speed and and the unit of radian per second. Well, that's it. Now I will show you how to compile the model. So on the stop time you put infinite. The solver we will use one scooter for the four. A fixed step of one millisecond. Now these are just things for the compiling of the model. So the, 
the step size is linked with the uh, constant value of our model. We have to choose something lower than the. I mean, the the step size should be lower than the the time constant of the model. That's why we've chosen one millisecond because our constant time constant is something like 20 milliseconds, so it's 20 times bigger. So it's okay. We just find out the folder where the model is compiled. It's here. Copy that. Put it in the main folder with the DC motor model. So what we want to achieve is this configuration. That's why we need uh, three of the models, which are the P. ID speed controller, the PID position controller, and the controller selector. Uh, all the links will be done after. So now the first step is to create these three other uh, models. So I just did it before. I don't need to show you how it's done. I just how I did it. I just show you the result, the final result. So I chosen to do explicit PID in order to to um, be able to modify the values after. I also put a saturation of 12, which corresponds to the maximal uh, energy we can voltage we can deserve with the motor, which is 12 volts. So now let's do the the project on with the with very stand. We create a new project, put it in the, the path in the folder. We open this one. Now we have to add the models. So we will add the three models. Detect automatically the the files, which is point D D L L. So we have the four models. Okay. Yeah, for each model, the inputs and outputs are the one configured with uh, the the any very stand modules and simulink. You remember? So now to make everything clearer, we just add the units of of what we need. As I said before, the speed is in radian per second, so I position is in radian. We use the voltage, the resistance, copper, newton per meter. <coughs> Okay, so now according to the configuration I've shown you before, we have to to put the order, the execution order, 
after that we did the mapping so now we just connect the input with the corresponding output of each model and contrary also the corresponding outputs and the, with the corresponding inputs Yeah, here you can see the the importance of making everything really clear with the names. Otherwise, it's really hard to remember what corresponds with what. So we should have six. Okay, that's it. Now on the controller we just we are working local, so we put window, the target weight is settled on 1000 Hz. It's the max maximal target weight you can achieve in with windows. So the higher the target weight, the higher is the precision of the, of the control. So now we just deploy the model. Here we have two kind of graphic interface. We will use the easier one. Maybe not the cleaner, but anyway, we're just interested in the final result. And now we have to all the imports. We have some imports are linked to nothing for now, so we have to link them to to controller. Like here, we use boolean for one of the import of the PA of the sorry of the of the selector. Yeah, sorry for the screen. It will disappear. Yeah, the speed, speed instruction, also the position instruction. So that we can modify it easy. Easily. So we will also indicate it again to make everything clear. So if if you if you what the unit before it should appear here also. It's present. Radian, radian per second. So now for each PID controller, so the speed and the position, you put the inputs for the P, the I and D in an explicit way. So now we just put inputs for them. I mean, to con numeric control to modify the values.
on the lasting probes, resistant copper. We indicate it again to make everything clear. Now we put graphs to visualize everything in real time. So this one we will visualize the, sp the speed instruction and also the speed output. We'll see both. Same for the position now. The instruction and the effective output, position output, sorry. The same for the tension. Now again I put some indicators to visualize the real value easier than directly on the graph. And so this one has been already done, sorry. and the position output so we have the wall screen Now all the values of the inputs, so the, what we will visualize, they were settled by reading the data sheets of the DC motor. For instance, we know that the maximal speed is something like 1100 radian per second. So we will just show it from 0 to 1100, also the input will go further. It's nonsense otherwise. Here yeah, position just from minus hundred to plus minus plus hundred. From minus twelve to plus twelve. Titles can also be added. Some for the resistant copper can't go can be bigger because it's a small motor so be careful with the value we give if you put ten here it will be shitty values.
so the values of both PID has been settled before using experimental methods but you can also use other methods so first we just put on the position control boolean that's why we have direct response of the position and we can do the same with the speed just put off the position control and on the speed control and as you can see the real-time response is what, ex what was expected also if you had resistant couple you see the tension gets higher or lower thanks for watching this tutorial is part of a mechatronic project in our engineering school UTBM so now we hope the explanation given will help you with your real-time controller